we finally got some official numbers in. This is only with 10 precincts, so that's 5.75% of precincts in Kanawha County. As you can see behind me, they are very busy. Volunteers are counting away. They've got a lot of bins to go through still. Two fatalities in this plane crash. Uh, at Jaeger Airport it happened shortly before 7 a.m. And if you are planning on, you know, flying out of there today, you had a flight scheduled or you have a family member flying in, that will not be happening until this is all clear. We did learn that the airport, Jaeger Airport, will be closed until Saturday. Jaeger Airport will be closed until Saturday. Not sure what time. Obviously, you heard uh, Leslie there said the NTSB will have to come in and do an investigation, so no flights will be coming in and out of there. Learning new tricks, how a canine trains for the job to fight crime, and how this new officer will help the city of Nitro. Dagger will be sniffing out drugs and chasing down suspects, and once he bites down, there's no escaping. People are singing, they're walking together, and they're going to pray together for James Means, who was shot and killed on Charleston's East End. We've seen a lot of damage, a lot of heartbreak. Just yesterday, Clendenin was completely underwater. Now all that's left is a huge mess and a lot of mud. Just so you can see what these families are dealing with, look at this house. There's mud on the steps. There's even mud on the plants. You can find Pokemon all over, even here at the Capitol, and it's fun trying to catch them all, but police want everyone to be careful while playing. We're still following breaking news out of Huntington. I-64 eastbound lanes are still closed at the 5th Street exit. This is a live look right now, so a lot of traffic concerns. A wrong way driver hit a tractor trailer head on. We have crews tracking the snow tonight. Kaylee Gunderson is tracking conditions in Kanawha County. Brooke Thibodeau is in the snow tracker in Putnam County. And meteorologist Brandon Stover is in the weather center. Brandon, what can we expect for tonight? Feeling a little sluggish after losing an hour of sleep this weekend? I am, are you? I am, big time. <laughs> well, just go ahead and call it a day. It's actually National Napping Day. This is my kind of day. <laughs> Last night's Powerball was the 10th largest jackpot in the game's history, and neither of us won. No, unfortunately. <laughs> I know. But if we did win, we would still come to work, yes, wouldn't we? Would. we? we would. Absolutely. Be here. Yeah. This is Buck. In his short life, he's been through some tough times. But thanks to Scott Curry and his family, he got a second chance. He was in such bad shape, and I was really worried that he wouldn't make it. On Wednesday night in Pinch, Curry saw a cat running across his yard and go under his porch. Curry was able to get Buck out, and the itty bitty kitty committee got him the help he needed. The words can't describe your anger. It's, it's heartbreaking. At first, Dr. Stacy Chase thought the one-year-old cat was attacked by another animal, but this x-ray shows a whole other story. You can see how many buckshot pellets hit this poor kitty. He has multiple puncture wounds all over, everywhere from his tail all the way up to his ears, poor kitty. So um, that's where the bird shot went in. We think that he was shot at pretty close range, and we actually think that the bullets did not cause the back legs to be broken, that those were broken another way. After undergoing surgery for for his legs, Buck is doing well. For Dorella Tuckwiller, it's hard to grasp how someone could do this to such a sweet animal. He probably ran up to somebody, just he wanted to be loved and probably purred and um, they decided they were going to do other things such as shoot him and break his back legs. Everyone coming together for Buck hopes the person who did this is caught. It would really not be nice to see somebody who could do that to a defenseless animal be punished for what they did. Just absolutely disgusting. I'm hoping that the person will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law um, and hopefully they won't have an opportunity to abuse any more animals. I just called Metro 911 and they said they've had several accidents today, so I don't suggest driving, but I do suggest going outside and doing some fun activities. I'm actually going to attempt to sled down this hill right here. We have some people here who are going to help me out. Buddy, are you going to show me how to do this? <laughs> Where do I sit? Right here. Right here? All right. Let's see. Hopefully I don't slip here. What do I hold on to? Oh, my goodness. Hopefully I don't hit the tree. Baby. Where do I put my feet? In there. In there? Just put both them in. All right. Wish me luck. Oh, my goodness. You can do it. Okay. You think I can do it? All right. Here I go. Woo! Even though this house has been restored and is now a historical landmark, spirits are believed to be here. Many have experienced the unexplainable, like doors and lights working by themselves, hearing voices in different rooms. Or the sound of chains rattling here in the basement. 
even see moving shadows or faces in the window. Good Wednesday morning. First, let's get a check of the forecast. If you're getting ready to head out the door with meteorologist Doug Harlow. Doug, how does the morning look? A woman has been charged in the death of a baby who police say was left in a hot car. That baby's grandmother right there. Carolyn Davis is charged with child neglect and abuse resulting in death for law enforcement in West Virginia. Calling for backup in rural areas can mean help is still miles away. On occasion, deputies and troopers have to respond to calls alone, as was the case for Corporal David Fry, who was shot twice in Lincoln County this week. Breaking news about the deadly plane crash at Jaeger Airport. New at noon, we're learning new information about the two people killed in this crash. We have several crews covering all angles of this story. Let's get straight to Eyewitness News reporter Leslie Rubin, who joins us live from the airport. Right now, the 360 Heroin and Opioid Response Summit is underway. We have team coverage of the event where U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions made a stop this morning to deliver opening remarks about the ongoing opioid crisis. She was hit by a fish what? that fell from above. The catfish was 18 inches and about five pounds. She believes that a bird was carrying the fish wow. and dropped it from 50 feet overhead. The encounter left a scar on Lisa's eye and really traumatized her at first. She had to get a tetanus shot and was put on antibiotics, but now she and her friends just kind of laugh about it. Isn't that crazy? Catfish NATO. How about <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, right? There you go. You got some bad luck there. All right. Sorry. <laughs> we'll see you at 10 on Fox 11 and back here on WCHS 1011. Have a great night, everyone. See you.